Hey, hey, everybody. What is up? Ashley here. I am so excited for tonight's Zoom. We're going to be talking about building your mindset and your audience. So as you're hopping on, uh, drop a one in the comments right now. I see all you beautiful humans. If you are super pumped about tonight, if you have your pen and piece of paper ready and you are ready to learn some information, I'm excited to be on tonight. Not just uh, myself sharing with you, but we have two incredible leaders that I just look up to so much and I admire. And I've been saying their name a lot to our tribe, uh, especially when it comes to TikTok. So I'm super, super pumped to have us on. So we're just going to open up with like a quick two minute spiel of our story in case some of you guys don't know who we are. And uh, then we're going to dive right in. So Brittany Landrum, I see you first. Why don't you unmute and uh, just share your story with us, my friend. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. So a little bit about myself. I was a single mom working 40 to 50 hours a week when this business found me. Um, I definitely was not looking for something, something like this because I had tried a product now 11 years ago, but five years before a stranger asked me to do this and I didn't think it worked. So when I was first asked to do this, I said, no, thank you. But my favorite part of my story is that my no did not slow Alyssa down. She was like, next, kept, because she knew why she had said yes. Three months later, she ended up earning a bonus. I, here I was struggling single mom and I was like, you know, something's got to give. So I sent her a message and I asked her a couple questions. Could I make my money back, the $99? Could I earn some free product? And if I didn't like it, could I quit? And I want to share one answer that changed my life. At the end, she answered all my questions, but she said, if you're already thinking about quitting, this probably isn't for you. And I remember kind of like stepping back a little bit, but that statement changed my life because once I decided to say yes, I felt like I owed it to her to really try. And within four months, um, yeah, the rest is history. Literally the rest is history. Bonus wise, it's like over $400,000. But what's crazy to me, and this was, this is my because of it works if I have to sum it up in like one or two sentences. And it still, it still strikes so near and dear to my heart. Because of it works, I can say yes to things that I used to have to say no to. But more importantly than that, I can say no to things that I used to have to say yes to. Dang, you guys, drop a one or drop a two. I don't even know we're number one and we're just getting started. This is gonna be a great night. Uh, drop a two, like that is crazy. If that's like super inspiring, almost $400,000 in bonuses. Um, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, super, super awesome. Jocelyn, why don't you come on and share a little bit about your story real quick? Hey, you guys. So one thing that I love about my story is I almost feel like I grew up with this company. So I actually found this at 19 years old at a bridal expo, wasn't even like on social media. And after trying the ultimate body applicator, I had awesome results. And I started referring people to her. I was like, oh, my mom needs this. My sister needs this. My best friends need this. And after I made uh, my enroller, Andrea, about $300 in cash just from retail sales, she finally said, hey, why don't you sign up to make some extra money off of your family and friends instead of making me all this money? She spoke to my red. And so I got started and I made about 800 bucks in my first month and a half. And then I did nothing for about six months. But quitting was never an option for me. I knew that if I started showing up that I had to go up. And so nine months it took me to promote to executive. And that's also when I jumped into actually doing social media instead of trying to copy my enroller who thrives face to face. And when social media started to be a big thing for me, I started promoting quick. So by the time I was in the business for a year, I hit diamond. That next year I went from diamond to presidential diamond and was the number 60 income earner after just that year, it was just crazy. And then the year after that, I went ambassador and hit the millionaires club at four and a half years. And it's just kind of fun too, because like when I started this business, I didn't know my husband. So like he saw me completely evolve in this business and he wasn't supportive at first. And we hit the millionaires club before we had kids or anything like that. And so it's just been like the biggest blessing because now we truly, you know, get to just live life and provide for our girls and not worry about those finances. We've been able to pay off all credit card debt. We've paid off cars. 
Um, and it's just so fun, like how much this business can do. And I think the biggest tip from my story that I love sharing is take quitting off the table. I never would have been successful had quitting ever been even an option. And Brittany just mentioned that too. And then the second thing is realizing that when you show up, you go up. Maybe something I say, maybe something Brittany says, or maybe something Ashley says is what resonates with you. But if you don't show up, something that you didn't show up to, if you would have showed up, what they would have said would take you to ambassador. Oh my goodness. Drop a three. If you guys don't quit, did you hear what Jocelyn just said? Nine months to go executive. Some of y'all get pissy if you don't hit it in nine days. And here she is nine months in at a distributor level, never gave up. And then that, that sucker just compounded. Do you guys hear like she went from month nine executive to month 12 diamond like that's crazy um and if you've never heard my story i just want to share it real quick my name is ashley mayfield i am an ambassador and this month is going to be four and a half years that i've been in the business i swore i would never do anything like this drop a four if you thought you would never in a million years do something like this that was totally me took me 18 months to say say yes but i'm so glad that i did um i hit ruby pretty quick i knew exactly what i wanted i wanted to get a free incentive the company was giving away and then I tied and died and I, I teach that a lot if you tie you die that I had no idea what I wanted after that and something powerful happened in my business month eight um, month eight was a turning point and I'm going to talk about that tonight because it's when I decided to go all in in month eight was January 2017 so this January will be four years that I have been running and just like Jocelyn and Brittany said uh, I have never slowed down I've never take quitting off the table um, this year's probably been like the toughest year for me, not because it's 2020. It's actually been a very fruitful year for me internally, but I would say like mindset wise, I feel like I've got these challenges and these hurdles. And I know we have, you know, we're all experiencing that on some level, right? Um, so no pity party here, but I haven't slowed down um, even with that happening. And this has been able to completely change my life. We went 100% debt free. We paid off $63,801.99 in six months. Uh, now we have the honor of saying, that we're top income earners with the company and I don't know I think it's just really cool to live life on your terms and so again I can completely validate these two ladies do not quit quitting should not even be in your register it shouldn't be in your vernacular or whatever that word is called like it shouldn't even be an option okay and the second thing that I will say just from my story um, what a lot of people struggle with is instant gratification versus delayed gratification. And yes, I have a podcast coming out about that. You better be subscribed to Fireball with Ashley Mayfield. You're darn right. I just pimped myself out for free. Okay. And so I have a podcast coming about, out about that soon is I learned two years ago when we were in our debt-free journey how to say no now so I could say yes later. And I feel like I am living in my yes days and it feels so freaking good. And too many people aren't willing to sacrifice temporarily for long-term gain. And they will never see the fruit of that compound effect that Jocelyn talked about because every time they do a little bit of sacrifice, every time it hurts just a little bit, they puss out, okay? And we're all reds tonight. So we ain't gonna try to smack booties, but it's probably coming. So go Gird your loins and brace for impact, okay? <laughs> So I love it. Ladies, we're going to be talking, uh, diving in first about mindset. And, you know, I have just, like I said, been admiring you two uh, because of TikTok. And we're going to talk about building an audience. Um, but how many of you right now listening need to go deeper in your mindset? Drop a five. Like something's happening. You are just, maybe you're just mentally like you're taxed. You're exhausted. You're at your wits end. I know I'm sure all three of us can speak on that. Like I said, it's already been a little bit of a, a tough year for me. But first, and uh, Jocelyn or Brittany, either one of you can unmute and go first. There's really no rhyme or reason to this tonight. But uh, why is personal development so important to you? And did you start doing it right away in your business? And if not, what, like, when did you turn that on? And when did you start doing personal development? I can go ahead and go first. So I actually love this question because when I joined this business, that was the one thing that I did not do. I took everything that Alyssa said seriously, because to me, those were like 
things that I had to do, the other, the self-development, I thought I could control myself because I was raised to work hard. My parents made me pay for school, pay for my car. And it wasn't that they were there. That was just how they raised me to be a hard worker. And so in my mind, I'm like, I know how to work hard. I don't need self-development. I just got to worry about posting and doing live videos. And, you know, because times have changed. I've been doing this for a little over six years now. And what's crazy is, so my answer is, how, did I do it from the beginning? No, I did not. But I quickly came to realize that, and I'm just going to, like, we are very red personalities, so I'm just going to say it. The best part about this business are the people that you will meet. The hardest part about this business are the people that you will meet because most people, it's just the world we live in, most people do not know how to put their big girl panties on and get over it. And I don't, I'm not saying that to say that things don't happen. Guys, I'm a blended family and anyone drop a, I don't know, six in the chat. If you guys are a blended family, okay. Anyone that has the blended family know that some days things are smooth sailing and sometimes we're just brawling in here. Okay. So if you see this successful person in social media, just know that my boat still rocks daily. The difference is I'm very aware that I cannot control what happens to me, but I can control how I react, what happens to me. And to get a little bit preachy for a second, I started, honestly, because of this business, because of self-development, I started to use my mind as a powerful weapon. So like when something would try to rock my world, well, once your world starts rocking, this business is the first thing that everyone puts on the back burner. You'll still go to a job that you can't stand that you're not motivated to go to, but you go because you feel like you have to. Well, I started treating this business way before it was my only thing. Guys, I actually did this business, was a single mom and worked my dental job for 12 months. I could have retired before that, but something in my mind, I love my job enough. So I was like, no, I can do it. I can do it. And at 12 months, I was like, okay, I can't do it anymore. This is just too much. But something that I learned very early on, once I started doing self-development is that bad things were going to happen to me. And if you're anything like me, by the time you get like situation A figured out and you're like, okay, B's taken care of, I'm going to work on A, you look back and B just fell apart. Now you got A figured out. Okay. That's how my life goes. And what I realized, if I could take my message, my messes and make them my message, not only did it give me the power back and out of Satan's hands, but I started to impact, inspire other people. And that all came from doing self-development. Another question I'm gonna go ahead and answer and then Jocelyn can answer is, what does self-development look like? What type, how long? I will tell you, I did not start doing it consistently every single day until 2020. And 2020 has been one of the best years that I have had not only in this business, but personally for a very long time. I get up at 4.45 every day. I absolutely hate it. But from five to six, I journal, I do a devotional and I do self-development every single day. Oh my gosh, drop like a boom in the chat, you guys. I love that. And Brittany, I feel like I can relate a lot with that whenever I first came in, even all the years, and this is gonna sound so bad, you guys, but all the years that me and Jason, before we joined this business, uh, I mean, he still does ministry, but we were in full-time ministry, like in a church, being like on pastoral staff. Even I was on staff outside of my husband and I was not developing myself on a daily basis. I was not growing my mindset. And I almost felt like, because like organically and naturally, I was not only a high achiever, but I was a people pleaser. Like I'm a red blue through and through that I just got crap done. And so I was always moving forward. And I was like, well, if I'm always moving forward, like it just makes sense. It's going to keep going that way. But unfortunately, whenever you're talking about life change and we're talking about freedom and we're talking about something like entering a realm that you've never been before and that you're not used to seeing around you like you're you don't have that proximity all the time you almost have to develop yourself to become the person your results require and you know even when i was a retail manager you guys that's the person i wanted to promote i wanted to promote and give someone an advancement 
or a promotion, whatever they call it in the corporate world. I already forgot. I'm so disconnected. I'm so unemployable, you guys. Um, but, uh, you know, I always wanted to uh, give someone the job offer, the person who is already outperforming, the person who is already going above and beyond, not the one that necessarily applied for the job, but the one that was like, holy crap, they're hungry for it because they're showing me they want it already. And so for me, my mindset was month eight. Month eight, I sat at Ruby for the longest time. I actually wanted to quit all of month seven. It was December of 2016. I cried every single day and I'll never forget. Literally, Jason sat me down on the couch. He's like, I do not want you to quit. He always saw the vision. He always saw the $50,000 a month. And for me, he was like, I don't want you to quit, but I can't see you like this. And what I didn't realize, you guys, is that God was changing me on the inside. And sometimes, just like Brittany said, whenever we go through life, whenever, how many of you guys know that like change is a process, drop a seven, okay? It's not like black and white. It ain't no mother truck and uh, switch. You just on off, on off. Like, no, that's not how, you're in a process. I'm in a process right now, like mentally, emotionally, and it sucks. It's frustrating. I am so frustrated internally right now. I can't even clearly depict it because I feel like my car is in all this fog. Like currently, as I'm talking, you guys right now right but that's where i was and i decided that's where i was month seven but i never quit and month eight when january 2017 rolled around i decided to go all in with personal development and i've done it every day since and for me it looked like so many things it started off as podcasts and audibles because i couldn't read a book and then probably a year and a half ago jason was like you know you should really put your hands on a book like there is, it hits different when you read a book, guys. And I know you can sit in the comments all day long. I don't know how to read. Okay, I was in like seventh grade gifted classes with a third grade reading level. So I got you, girl, okay? But you need to, it's a discipline. That's really what you're saying is you don't want to have the discipline and focus. And it hits different when you do that with a book because with a book, you're not distracted. I can fully, you know, clean the kitchen or vacuum or whatever while I'm listening to an audible. But there's something different when you're focused and you're, all that gazelle-like intensity that Dave Ramsey talks about. Like when you're paying off your debt, you're like gazelle-like intensity in that book. And so I would say actually now I have a non-negotiable every day this year, I've read 10 pages a day. That's been one of my daily routines. I love it. I've been able to get through so many books in addition to podcasts and sermons, but I feel like I'm just, I overwhelm myself. I inundate myself with stuff because I, th this is a life thing, you guys. It's not even an it works thing. It's not even a business thing. It's do you want to be the best wife possible? Do you want to be the best mom possible or dad, you know, for all the brothers on here, whatever, but you know, girls rule the world. Let's go. Um, but do you want to be the best business partner? Do you want to be the best friend? Do you want to be the best human for Jesus? Like it's a yes or no answer. And you don't know what you don't know. And so if you want to grow, you've got to dive in. So Jocelyn, when did your journey start with personal development and what does that kind of look like to you? Why is it important to you? I love this question because like the first time I was asked this, I literally was like, I have no idea, but here's what I could tell you. Like for me, I didn't even like when I, jo I joined this business to make money, I did not join this business to become a leader or to become a better person or anything like that. And so this personal development aspect was just like so new to me. And so like, as an example on my YouTube channel, if you watch some of my really, like my old videos back when I was a double diamond, um, I like was so cut and dry, like this is what you do to make money. And it was just so simple to me. But the one thing that I look back on that I was, I, I was always so consistent with was I was reading my scriptures every single day. Like that's personal development too. Like any life lesson can really be learned in the scriptures. And so I was doing that, but then on top of that, like <laughs> once I hit presidential, I, you know, started to realize like, okay, I have these people that I have to kind of coach and I'll, I'll never forget too. on my way to presidential. This was like, <clears throat> um, right around the time that I promoted to diamond, I remember I was doing a coaching call with one of my brand new distributors that just got started. I had her on the phone and I was like, how much extra money per month do you want to make? And she's like, I need to make an extra $500. And I was like, okay, perfect. I'm excited to help you. When do you want to make it by? And she said yesterday. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love her fire here. But I felt so overwhelmed of like, 
somebody trusts me to help them make an extra $500. And I still feel like I have no clue what I'm doing. And that's when I realized that I had to start taking personal development seriously, not because I didn't know what I was doing as far as how to work the business and how to show people how to work the business, but because I knew that if I wanted to take my team to the next level, I had to take my uh, mindset that I could do it, that I had that leadership capacity to take them to that next level. And it's interesting too, because anytime I've hit a funk in my business, it's not that I don't know how to do the tasks and do the things to grow my business. It's literally because there's something in my mindset that was holding me back. And so when I finally realized that and started taking personal development seriously with reading the books, doing personal development, that's when everything changed for me. And so um, for me now, like before I had kids, I used to like read paper books all the time. I used to like have my scriptures on my bedside table and I read them every single night. And now with kids, um, forget it because it would look like a coloring book. Like it would just look ripped up and terrible. And so now it's like all digital. I love my audio, um, audible. And honestly, like I wish I could be Brittany, but my life right now, if I have a toddler and a, like a six month old. So I'm up a, a couple times a night with feeding babies and I cannot wake up early. And so I want you to know too, like you don't have to have that set schedule if you're, if you just can't, like, I just can't wake up early. I try. Um, so I prefer to stay up later or nap time is my jam. Um, but I think the most important thing, just like Ashley says, it's that discipline. And I actually have a quote that I found on Pinterest. I have this on my desk as just like a daily reminder as I hop on my computer to get stuff done. And I want to read it to you because when I first heard this, this changed my life. It says, instead of saying, I don't have time, try saying it's not a priority and see how that feels. Often that's a perfectly adequate explanation. I have time to iron my sheets. I just don't want to, but other things are harder. Try it. I'm not going to edit your resume, sweetie, because it's not a priority. Um, I don't go to the doctor because my health is not a priority. If these phrases don't sit well, that's the point. Changing our language reminds us that time is a choice. If we don't like how we're spending an hour, we can choose differently. And so I just remember used to feeling like I just don't have enough time. I'm a busy mom. I'm a wife. I still have all the duties. How can I still do my business and feel like I'm not getting enough sleep? And I just had to take that step back. And, and I remember when my husband first gave me this idea, I was so mad at him. Like I was furious. I was like, there's no, like, you guys know what I'm talking about when they say what you need to do. And you're like, no, that's stupid. Like, I don't want you to be right. It was one of those moments, but I just remember him saying like, okay, he, he literally, oh, he, he took out a piece of paper and he wrote down, he was like, what time do you wake up? And I was like, 8.15. It was just like, whatever time he's like, okay, what are you doing for those first 15 minutes of the day? And then I, I didn't, I didn't have an answer for him. Taylor. And then the next, he's like, okay, what are you doing from the, from 8.15 to 8.30? And I was like, I don't know. And he literally tried to go through the whole day with me. And he's like, you keep saying you don't have time, but look at this. And I was so mad, but it made me realize I was just prioritizing. I don't even know what, this was before TikTok. I wasn't wasting my time scrolling or anything, but it made me become so conscious and aware and realize like, okay, I'm prioritizing binge watching a show on Netflix, or I'm prioritizing wasting my time rather than bettering my future for my family or, you know, like looking, I've got my last year's, my other ones over here. I can't take it off the wall, but like, I, instead of prioritizing, you know, this stuff for my family, I was prioritizing like this, you know, I, it's just stuff. And so that quote changed everything. And when I started prioritizing personal development, that's when I started to develop the mindset to know that I could do it. I love number one that you said that about your husband. Cause y'all, can you just drop like a me in the comments? If y'all's man, like if you need to start listening to your man a little bit Mo. Just drop a me. This is me verbally dropping a me, okay? Because Jason be telling me all the time, but y'all know we don't want to listen because we so hard-headed. Just me, no, cool. Okay, me and Jocelyn, I'm sure Brittany, we're all in our little own club. Um, but I love that you uh, talked about, you know, if you want to almost feel like a leader to your people, 
you need to be further ahead of them. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have like the one strong individual that comes in and that is well equipped, which is incredible. We all want those people. Okay. But how many of you right now would just be honest and drop the word yes in the comment if you don't feel like a leader? Okay, because I hear that I just don't feel like I'm a leader or you're scared to be a leader or you're scared to step into that authority or that power. I mean, I hope you hear from each of us tonight that the way that we did that is through personal development. And, you know, I you reminded me of a story that I have of a girl that joined me December 13th of 2017. Don't ask me how I remember these dates, okay? But I do. And uh, she joined me and I was so excited. I knew that she was different. Like I knew it, I knew it. Y'all know when you like get that one person that's gonna change your business. I like, I felt it. Like I'm that blue, that intuitive. Like I was like, ah, she's gonna be. It. Two hours later, she texts me and says, I want you to cancel everything. Like I made a mistake. I don't want to do it. I want you. Had I not personally developed, had I not taken time to like, like lean in, dive in, you guys, I was two months off the boat of, or I'm sorry, four months off the boat of learning the color personalities. If you guys don't understand, I have it on my podcast, I have it on my YouTube, like that's my jam, okay? I speak color personality. Had I not developed myself four months prior in learning that, um, I would have never been able to message her back and say, hey, will you just get on the phone with me tomorrow? Because I was able to quickly scroll her social media and identify that she had blue in her. And she was starting to get fearful and she was starting to get worried about that judgment. She was starting to get scared about, you know, did she have to look like this black, green and bling booger that just like, like she's in a cult. You know, I could, I could almost feel it. And I was able to get on the phone with her the next day, like, accurately identify who she was because I could speak her language because I'm a blue you guys right now she is a triple diamond in my organization could you imagine had I not done personal development had I not walked into that phone call like confident walking in with my authority letting her know how it was going to be and how she could do this the only reason I had that authority and that confidence was because I had developed myself. It's so important. You don't feel like you're a leader because you're not doing leader things. And so make sure that you're developing yourself and not just that you're developing yourself, but you're really prioritizing it. So Jocelyn, why would you say like right now, out of all the time of the year. I mean, we're getting ready to go on the holidays and this can be like anywhere from like your crazy aunt who lives in her mama's basement, who's elbow deep in Dorito. It's gonna be like, so how's your little business? We all got that family member. So we're like gonna have that on some side and then it's gonna be like high anxiety, depression, like something, the holidays can be very overwhelming for people. So if someone's not doing personal development, why do they need to start? And like, why is this season so important for them to do that? So especially, you know, with this time of year, I, you guys know, like when the season changes, and especially if you're like in Alaska or somewhere where there's not as much light in the day, like there really is a thing as seasonal, seasonal depression. And so, you know, what I can tell you, and especially even in my um, season of life, like with the postpartum feels like what I can tell you, especially in regards to our business with, you know, about to head into the new year is you already know, like come the new year people just come seeking out an opportunity. They come seeking out ways to get better health and better financial situation. And so if you start preparing your mindset for that now, like here's the thing, who you are is who you attract. And so if you make that decision and you just make that list of like, okay, what would my ideal business partner look like? You know, if you want somebody that that is a leader that has those leadership leadership capacities. If you want somebody that is self-disciplined, somebody that's motivated and self-driven, you've got to start working on those things within yourself. And how do you do that? It's through that personal development. And so the more that you can personally develop yourself in this time frame, once that new year hits and all of these seeds that you've been planting and people start coming out of the woodwork seeking us, which I mean they already are right now, but besides that point, that if you can develop yourself to that next level before the new year, you are going to just bring a completely different 
trajectory of people into your organization that are going to be those people that sign up that promote to diamond so quickly because your vibe attracts your tribe and so the best way like if you want to hire tribe you just got to bring yourself up to that level and they come whether it's people that are currently on your team or whether it's people that are watching you that have been watching you for three years that have a huge network you know, they're watching you and they're waiting for you to develop into the leader that you need to become so that you resonate with them on that level. And then they jump in. That's what you're working towards right now. Holy crap. You guys, that was so good. In fact, I want everybody, there's 320 people on, well, someone hopped off because they all oh, another person shoot. I'm gonna stop talking about that. So, uh, 318 of you get in the chat and I want you to drop at least three attributes of the people that you want to attract. You need to like, this, this is a work zoom. Y'all heifers didn't know you done signed up for a work zoom. Okay. And so do you want someone that's a go-getter? Do you want someone that has grit? Do you want someone that has a good attitude? How do you want someone that handles stress? Do you want someone that is coachable? Do you want someone that's creative? Someone that's like, uh, not fearless, but that's courageous. Okay. Like what are those attributes? Get in the chat and blow it up. Yes. I love this. I love this. Selena said someone that's passionate. Kim said confident, consistent, and positive. Lauren said positive attitude, committed, outgoing. Susan said self-starter, motivated, hard worker. I love that. Hey, Kelly. Hey, boo. Driven, hardworking, positive attitude, coachable, courageous. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Keep blowing it up. I love this, you guys. And as you're creating this list, you get to make sure that you exude these things. Cause like Jocelyn said, you're gonna attract your tribe based on your vibe. I don't know, Brittany, you got a tough act to follow cause Jocelyn just hit a home run. So I'm gonna ask you the same question. Why do you think it is so important that people start doing personal development? They're staying consistent, but especially right now with the holidays coming around the corner. So I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to change your question a little bit because I think it's like, it's meant to be, I know it's meant to be heard by someone on here and maybe 300 of you. How many of you are kicking yourself for not being consistent with self-development at this point? Like you've seen people join, take self-development seriously, and then their business has transformed. And so you kind of are like, oh, I should have listened. Oh, I should have listened. Okay. I want to speak to you because for five and a half years in this business, I was successful because I was consistent with my business, but I could not break the ceilings because of my mindset. And so I want to speak coming from someone that I was in your situation just in January of this year. Just in January, did I take this seriously? And here's what happened. I'm just going to call myself out. It's embarrassing, but it's the truth. For five and a half years, and my team that's on here, they'll be like, yeah, she said that I would get on my own team trainings and I would start them out like, I know a lot of you think I'm really mean and a lot of you guys don't like me. And it's so funny because I'm more loved by like sideline teams and I'm loved by my own. That's the kind of things that I was putting out there. Talk about wanting to vomit. Okay, but the reality was is because I lacked confidence that I was not a good leader. Now, I was still successful because I was a hard worker and I did the things, but there is difference between being consistent with the task, believing that you can make a genuine impact in other people's lives. So this just this year have i made the difference and you know what i can honestly stand confident and say i am a bad ass leader and and here's the thing my business has exploded in 2020 now does that mean that every person that joins me does what i recommend no but because i have poured into my mindset i am doing exactly what ashley and jocelyn said and i am attracting people that are positive, that are coachable, that are natural born leaders, that are willing to do the things, that are willing to leave their comfort zone because I journal and I self-develop self every single day. So I really just want to say, if you have not been doing it, don't beat yourself up from this moment forward, but stop giving yourself excuses that you can't start doing it either tonight or tomorrow morning. Now it's up to you to do it every day, but I'm telling you, if you do it every day, 
you will start attracting different types of people. And I, I call them impact making people. Shoot, y'all drop some fire in the chat. That was good. I didn't think you could follow Jocelyn, but man, you hit your home run too, Brittany. Good job. Um, but I, I, I love that you guys. And you know, if you start now, what's the leader, like what's your leadership gonna look like in 90 days, in six months? You know, are you gonna look back in six months and when someone else is being shouted out or someone else has progressed a sideline sister or someone underneath you or whatever Mike Patillo always says, I'll probably butcher it. You're gonna be grateful that you did or you're gonna wish you had, you know? And so yes, it's a discipline, but this is something that I've had to learn not only to prioritize every single day, but to prioritize in my day. Because I could tell you there was a season this year where my 10 pages, I'd have to get up out of bed. I'd be like, crap, I forgot my 10 pages. And then I'm just rushing through it and it means nothing. And I, just my own personal things, I've had to get to the point where I'm making sure like by lunchtime, I'm getting in that first hit of personal development. And again, for me, it's 10 pages. I do listen to sermons and I listen to the crap all day long. But what counts for me is my 10 pages. You just start wherever you're at, whatever works for you. I love Jocelyn said she's got younger babies. Like she couldn't possibly read a book. You guys like done is better than perfect. It doesn't, reading a book doesn't make you better than someone that listens to a book. It's your learning style. It's, I had to have an evolution because my husband was calling me to something greater for me. So, but have that non-negotiable and make sure you're prioritizing yourself with it, man. Maybe you just read until you get a nugget. That's someone told me that one time. They're like, even in the Bible, just read until you get a nugget and then chew on that all day. Some of y'all, you could be one paragraph in and the Lord can speak to you and you'll learn so much more than people who are just doing the action, okay? So super, super important, but make a commitment. And if you're willing to make a commitment, just drop a yes in the comments right now. Brittany, do you remember a year ago when we were at Tony Robbins and he made us say yes, like every five seconds? <laughs> I feel like I'm like reliving that moment. All my memories, I'm like going back to Tony Robbins right now. It's so great. So Brittany, speaking of, let's transition from mindset to building your audience. Um, I have been dr like name dropping you and Jocelyn uh, to so many people in our team because I'm absolutely loving what you guys are doing on social media, specifically with TikTok. But I'd love for you to say, um, what different platforms are you on? Share with people. And what's kind of made you hone in on TikTok? Because that's what caught my eye about you, boo boo. Okay, so I do Facebook, Instagram, and then also TikToks. And then I take my TikToks over to Reels, which are also on Instagram for those of you that don't know. Now, a little bit of background, um, just because I think that it will inspire some of you. For five and a half years, Remember, I just told you that I would like speak things like I'm not a good leader and my team doesn't like me, right? I would also tell people, I would also say to myself and other people, yeah, I just can't build on Instagram. So for five and a half years, I only built, I mean, obviously I'm successful, but I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, where would I have been if I wouldn't have been so like keeping certain doors closed? So for five and a half years, I only built on Facebook. Only in January of this year, I picked my word for the year and that was follow through. And I made myself a promise that I wouldn't say yes to anything that I wouldn't follow through. But if I said I was going to do it, I was going to follow through. Okay. And so with that, I'm going to call myself out. I did not want to do TikTok. How many of you were in this business a couple years ago when host to post became, became when host to post started do you know what i did i sat and i waited to see i'm just going to sit back and see if this really does work every time in this business Brittany landrum would sit back and wait to see what other people did with it before i wanted to go put my toes in the water and the second that I knew there was a new platform. I looked at my husband, I looked at my son, and I looked at my daughter, even though she's only now four. And I was like, this is game on for us. I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know that it'll work, but I am not going to look back and I'm not gonna be like, I wish I would have started when I was told to start to begin with. Now I wrote some dates down because I think it's super important for you guys to know this. I started in January of this year. It took an entire month for my first video to take off on TikTok. That was consistent videos for an entire month before one took off. 
My second one did not take off for another two months. And my third video did not take off till three months after my second one. Only in July did my TikTok finally take off. Now, I'm not saying it wasn't growing, but so many people dabble with certain things, but not long enough to even get the blessings that are behind those doors. And so I made myself, I just made myself a, um, a promise. I was going to do it whether I saw the results or not. And it just one trickled one, trickled one, trickled one. And then all of a sudden it just started snowballing. And it's honestly been absolutely insane. So I am sitting here mind blown at how similar our TikTok, like you basically just shared my exact TikTok journey. Um, so I have been, I was fluent on Facebook and Instagram prior to the business. I was an extreme couponer. And so um, I had built a following on Instagram through couponing. Cause that sounds so cool. You guys, I was an extreme couponer. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's pretty embarrassing. It's fine. So, um, but uh, whenever I joined the business, Facebook came out with Facebook live for me two months after or a month after I joined the business. And I knew if I wanted to be different, I had to get on video. I knew I had to move different and I built to diamond on video. You guys, I'm a huge advocate on video. I am convinced if you're running a business on social media and you're not doing video in some form or fashion, you're doing it wrong. I, I'm sorry. I said it. Okay. Whether that's Facebook live, you're in your stories, you're doing TikTok, but, um, I too would not get on TikTok. Jason, uh, started talking about it like September, October of last year. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. He actually put a video on. He got like 40,000 views on it. And I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I didn't want to learn something new. How many of you guys are stubborn? Just drop a yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I got to call us out though. I didn't want to do it. Didn't want to do it. In Costa Rica in December, me and Denise Walsh are sitting at the airport. She's like, I think I'm going to get into TikTok. I was like, yeah, I think I probably should too. Didn't do it. January finally decided to, you know, gird up my loins and just go for it. Took me about two or three weeks till I had a video, you know, get like 300,000 views. I thought I was the bee's knees. Uh, over the course of a few months, I think it took in March, right? Whenever like the world started going crazy, I had two videos back to back that hit over a million that got me from about to 40,000 followers. And I sat there steady. So you guys within 90 days, I went from no followers to 40,000 followers. I think I have right now 39, 39,600 on Instagram. And I've had my Instagram account since 2013. So in less than, I need you to hear that again, in less than 90 days, I hit up to 40,000 followers. And then about three weeks ago, I, I did uh, TikTok here and there randomly, you know, uh, I pulled back a little bit as we went through the whole IDS thing and whatever. But about uh, three weeks ago or about a month ago, I decided I was going to get very serious about it again. And about three weeks ago, I had a video go over a million, like overnight. And you guys, in three weeks... Okay, in three weeks, I went from 40,000 followers on TikTok. Today, I just crossed over 130,000. And I've had, this is gonna be my third video in three weeks that's gone over a million. And I'm, I submit this to you humbly. I'm not trying to come here and say, y'all, I was at nothing January. I was at nothing. I'm telling you in the last three weeks, literally three, I think it'll be four weeks on Thursday. Like I know the day, okay? So in less than a month, I've gone from 40 to 130, almost 100,000 followers, 90,000. You guys, you can do this right now. This is a right now thing. This isn't, you had to get on years ago. You had to get, this is a right now thing if you're willing to get uncomfortable. And I would say that, um, you know, I've been able to find my lane. And just like Brittany, I'm taking the same videos and putting them over on Reels. And it's just, I feel like it's brought so much fun. And I love watching you, Brittany, because um, I saw in one of your videos one time that you said that you started it off because you want to do something with your kids that were clean, something like that, right? And so I love that inspiration, but I love just that you involve your kids. You keep it very clean. That Pamela pumpkin thing, like I'm pretty sure, I don't know how many views you have, but at least like 20,000 views was me like, killing myself because I was laughing so hard. And so you guys, if you don't follow Brittany, you really, it, both her and Jocelyn, you really need to follow them. But what I like about you ladies is it's not constant business. It's not constant product. Like you're building an audience. 
And I feel like in the last three weeks, I've been able to find my niche that's working for me. Just like Brittany, you're doing all the dancing and you're involving your kids and you're having fun. Jocelyn, what ways have you built on social media? And again, I'm like super obsessed. You're like icon followers for me. You have like over 400,000 followers. You are slaying it on TikTok. You involve your daughters who are like just as gorgeous as you are, but kind of like, why are you leaning into TikTok right now? Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, about the evolution of how this business has gone for me so that I can just sh like really like shake you to show you how excited I am about this. So when I first got started in network marketing in this company in 2013, people did not grow their business on social media. Like it was unheard of. So like when I first started using social media, Instagram was brand new to me, but I just started like catching the rhythm. And I remember like, you know, being a presidential diamond at this point, I was enrolling, you know, like 20 customers a month and like 20 distributors a month. And my enrollers enroller is Stephanie Dunn and Stephanie would message me. She's like, okay, what are you doing? Because you're signing up more people than everybody. And for her to say that, like, she's got almost a whole company underneath her. I was like, okay, this, I feel so cool. And back then, like, this is, you know, 2014, 2015, literally all we had to do back then to get people interested was like add people and build a relationship and post. And people just like would come through the woodworks and it was nuts. Like it was so much fun. Like I just enjoyed it. And I remember thinking all the time, like, I'm so good at signing distributors. They just come to me, whatever, you know, and it's crazy because then things changed. Like all of a sudden, all of these other companies literally saw what we were doing in this company and started cockying us and there was just all of a sudden, just everybody else doing the same thing and posting wasn't doing it anymore. So then we had to learn like, okay, we actually have to reach out to people. And then we got even more creative with that and started host to post. And so, you know, going through like the evolution of how we've grown the business through social media, same thing with these two ladies. Like I heard a couple stories of people in it works that had started utilizing TikTok to get results. And after hearing about it a couple times, it's probably one of those things, like almost like a follow-up where they say, once somebody hears about it at least seven times, that's when they're like, okay, I'll buy it. It was like one of those things. I had to hear about it a couple times before I was like, okay, gosh, dang it, I'm gonna start it. So I started my TikTok in January and I wish I was smart enough to like have written down the numbers. I did not, sorry. But um, I, you know, like even not with not very many followers, I remember in January at conference, I guess so closer to February, right there in that peak, January, February in there, I posted a video um, at conference on Thursday night about the business. And just that night, like we were on stage, I wasn't even on my phone. But when I went and checked my phone after we were off of the stage for the top whatever 150 income earners, I had over 250 new potential distributors messaging me. And so I was like, okay, there's something here. And I was so excited. And so I just started running with it. And I kept hearing people say, if you want to be successful, you have to be consistent one to four videos every single day. And I just thought, okay, we already know, like if we wanted to be successful with host to post, you have to be consistent. If you want to be successful with Instagram stories and stories, you have to be consistent. If you want to be successful on Instagram, you have to be consistent. So I just knew that if I was going to do it, I was just going to be consistent. And so I just very consistently, one is a bad day for me, but I my goal is like to, to get, you know, three to four videos every single day, not always about the business, because here's the thing, like, the way these videos work is that the people that see your videos, if they like what you're posting, they'll follow you. So not only as an example with Ashley's videos that she's had go viral, like some of the people that I'm friends with on there, I see her, them like recreating her video, like using her audio. And it's just fun because literally like you can post the type of videos of who you want to bring in. So most of my followers are literally moms that live in the U.S that love their kids. And so I'm able to build this whole thing with them. And so just kind of like a crazy, like I have, I think last time I checked, it was like 438,000, 438.5 thousand followers on TikTok. I started with zero at the beginning of the year. So that's like, I don't even know how many per month, 
but it's crazy. Like I've had some videos that will just go viral and I'll get over 10,000 followers a day from. And, but here's the cool thing, like, and this is what I'm going to say, like my first video that went super viral, it was one of those days where I didn't feel like posting a TikTok. I wasn't feeling creative. I was like, I'm really bad at coming up with my own ideas. I'm not super funny. Like Ashley Sinclair. Um, I can't dance like Brittany. Um, and I'm not as blue as Ashley, so I can't do all that stuff. And so I, I just was like, what can I post? So I found a funny video from like a year, like it was from the summer of 2019 when my daughter Taylin was like almost a year old, just of her doing um, her little stink eye where she glares at you. I posted that video and it blew up. Like, I, I don't remember how many millions of views it has now, but you know, at that point it was like over a million views. And that's when I really started growing. And it was just cool because what I realized is like, you don't even have to have a video about the business go viral because the other videos bring the people in and then they watch your business videos. But here's the cool thing too. I posted another one. Um, this was probably two or three months ago at this point um, of me scaring Taylor. Like every time, you know, she's not in the same room as me, I usually like pull my phone out and start recording as I'm going around the corner. And I like say boo. And I just record those moments and I put them all together. And that video, like it was one of those days, once again, where I'm like, shoot, I need to post something. So I just, you know, put a compilation of these little videos of me scaring her together and didn't think anything of it, went to bed. When I woke up the next morning, that video had 1.6 million views. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do? And so guess what I did? I posted a business video right after that because of all of the traffic I was getting from that one video. Um, I had so many people messaging me so what I do is I have them on TikTok. I say, message me the word TikTok on Instagram for info. So now they're following me on Instagram. They're messaging me for info. I had so many people messaging me, hundreds, if not thousands of people. I didn't even, like, I probably didn't even have to post for the rest of the month. I signed 70 something distributors that month in one month. Like they were all paying a hundred dollars. Like there was no discount. And and it was just so crazy. And so here's the cool thing. Like, I was like, well, what if I just tried? Like, because I haven't been a big reels person, let's be honest, it's been more difficult for me. But I was like, what if I just start putting my viral videos on TikTok, on Instagram and see what happens? And so I just started doing that. The ones that started growing my followers on TikTok, I put them on Instagram. And then guess what? My followers started growing. Um, I, like Ashley, you know, when I started this business, I started a brand new Instagram account and I had that up to 35,000 followers at the beginning of this year because of TikTok and Instagram reels. I just hit over 50,000 followers this week. And like, it's just funny because like two weeks ago, I'm I literally, I've gained over 3,500 followers on Instagram this week. And it's just funny because like at the beginning of this year, I'm, and you're probably going to put a, I don't even know what number we're on. So let's just start over at one, but put a one in the chat. If you were, have just been feeling stuck on Facebook or Instagram, because you feel like you can't grow your network fast enough to get the host to post or to send, to reach out to more people. Like, I just remember feeling so stuck. Like I can't get enough people and TikTok and Instagram reels forever changed the game. Like I have so many people coming in interested. I can't message people back fast enough. I, like even right now, I have thousands of messages from people that are interested in the business that I literally, like I could just sit here and just message people back all day long and not even have to create new content because I have that many people interested. Um, and I just want to share one last thing and then I'll shut up for a minute. But um, Pam always says this, asking ye shall receive. You will get what you ask for, but once you start to get it, do not self-sabotage or it will be taken away. So I know you want this business and I know you want the boom right now so that when the new year comes, your business goes a whole nother level. I'm just getting cold chills all over thinking about it, but do not self-sabotage. So just know that where much is given, much is required. And you just have to set those priorities and remind yourself of what's most important in your life right now and be willing to sacrifice. You might not get as much time to watch The Bachelorette, which is not even that good of a season anyways, um, but to put that time into your business, into creating videos, 
what, like, what if you have a video that takes off? Like, I had no idea that when I posted one of my business ones on Instagram, like a business video that has an income disclosure statement, you guys, like, it's not that pretty. It got over last time I checked, it had 1.1 million views and I have messages for days. Like literally I will, I will like, I have, I've been messaging people like legit power hours, like two to three times a day. And I still like, I have like hundreds of direct message requests. I can't get through them all. So just know that it's coming and the work that you're putting in now is only going to 10 X your business and your paychecks in the new year. Holy poop, straight fire, you guys. This is for real. How many of you don't enjoy messaging people? Drop it too. Let's just be real, real tonight, okay? I knew when I came into this business, I did not want to build belly to belly. I wanted to do different. I knew I had to get on video. And that meet like, if you're going to use social media, go all in on social media. But you can either sit back and post once a day on Facebook and message some people and think you're working or you can just get uncomfortable in front of a camera and eventually that thing's going to pop off. And I think we're talking about TikTok tonight and I wanted to collaborate with these ladies because I'm inspired by their TikTok. You guys, I think so many of us were afraid to get in front of the camera because it's like, well, what do I say? What do I do? They're not overcomplicating it. And we all get, got on TikTok at first and overcomplicated it. We all did. Okay. But I love, like I said, Brittany's literally doing these dances with her kids and she's sprinkling in the business and the products. Jocelyn, same thing, doing her own thing, mimicking people. That's all I was. I was mimicking what other people were doing that were viral. You guys just copying other people's ideas, getting inspired. Shoot. I like copied something Brittany did the other day. Thanks, Brittany. Uh, that TLC, whatever it was. And I'm um, going to copy thing. And so like I'm copying what these ladies are doing like if y'all want to be a copycat you gotta copy the right cat okay and these two ladies are the right cat and listen i'm like 130 my goal is to get a package from tiktok i don't care how lame that sounds but i saw tiktok sent some packages last week some people i follow i said heffa please what's a girl gotta do to get a package from tiktok so that doesn't sound very bougie but that's like my next level of status that i want okay and so but it's so important right now of all times to sign, uh, or excuse me, it's so important right now of all times to be able to build that audience, you guys. You want to build an audience. People are going to be ready to buy right now. Like, don't get it twisted. Hashtag no slowing down in winter, boo-boo, okay? But how many more seeds will you plant if you start planting, 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 planting? If you just get uncomfortable and do it. If you don't like messaging people, which I think you should do it all, but I know some of y'all like really don't like it and you're petty betty about it, then freaking do something else. Get in front of the camera, get out from behind the camera, get in front of the camera and just, you know, shake, shake your salt shaker, whatever it's called. I'm so white. And, uh, you know, do whatever you do best. Brittany, uh, what are some tips that you could give? We're going to hop off in the next few minutes, but what are some tips that you would give to someone that's like super scared? I mean, we can, all three of us can agree that TikTok is the way to build the audience right now. You can build, you'll build faster on TikTok than you will on Facebook or Instagram combined right now because the algorithm's so open, but I'm sure there's so many people on here who want to be able to jump on TikTok, but they're a little nervous, a little scared. What, like go back to January and remember where your mind mindset was what's some tips that you would give them to just get started yeah so even if you guys even go look at my tiktok and you scroll to january i even look like a different person in those videos than i do now and it, we were nervous ty and i had no idea what i was doing obviously my son looks outgoing but what's funny about me is like put me at a party i would never get on that dance floor but from those videos you probably think i'm the life of the party i'm not I'm literally an introvert extrovert. I can fake it for a 30 second clip. Do I like to dance? Yes. So those when you see me doing those dances, Ty and I have not made them up. We find a song, we watch the dance, we learn the dance, we copy the dance. Just recently, have I started to add my own flair? Well, if you go look, you'll notice I've done three or four dances with a coffee mug in my hand so that I can talk about the product. Here's the other thing. It always goes back to your pillars. Now, I don't wanna go into this too much, but knowing who you are, what do you like? 
Those are the videos that if you don't know where to start, find some videos that interest you. If you like to cook, do cooking. If you like to do art, do art. If you like to sing, sing. If you don't like anything, just start copying people because that's what I did in the beginning. And like Jocelyn said, that I just really want to touch base on this. The couple videos that I have had that took off quickly are ones that I did not plan on posting. And they weren't videos for TikTok. It was, I had my, like Zella was doing something funny or I was being funny with Matt. So I got the video camera out so I could tape it, not even thinking it was gonna be for TikTok. But when I didn't have any content, but I knew that I had to lead by example for my team, I'm like, I gotta just get one up there. I put it up there and it it just took off. So I, my, my tip is just get started and realize that when you watch what I'm doing, I've just copied someone else. I didn't even come up with that. I mean, today I came up with my own about the Christmas lights because I, because here's what I've realized. You don't want controversy, but you want to do something that people will have like an opinion about. So I was like, ooh, colorful lights or white lights. This is really gonna take off. And it's starting to take off. Um, I think there was one more thing that I, oh, one more thing that I wanted to share. Remember when I said for five and a half years, I did not build on Instagram. In the last couple months, that's really all that I'm building. And we're talking 50, 60 distributors in the last couple months, all from Instagram. Okay. But I literally do TikToks that are 30 seconds or less so that all I have to do is save it and transfer it over. It's two bang, like two hits for one work, work smarter, not harder. That's my next thing. Do both, but just do TikToks and then carry them over. Boom. I love that. I actually saw on TikTok, um, I showed this to Jason. So how to like, and I actually broke it down for my tribe earlier this week, how to recycle your content. And so like, for me, if I were to do, I'm totally going to plug myself here, but if I were to do, uh, like a, uh, a podcast episode, how do you take that podcast episode? We already have it. We record it live. So now it's on my YouTube. It's a podcast. I can make quotes that go on my Instagram from my podcast leading back to that. I could do TikToks that go back to talking about my pot. Like I can make a reel about it. I could do a Facebook live on it. Like you can take the same piece of content, you guys, and recycle it on multiple different platforms in multiple different ways. And so get creative with that. Um, I forgot what else I was going to say, but uh, yeah, I love like literally we're just getting on and we're copying people's stuff and it's absolutely incredible. Um, I know that Jocelyn answered it. I'm sure we're all doing the same thing. We're all telling people to message us on Instagram. So make sure you have your Instagram. The button is linked. You can say, and no matter how many times you say message me on Instagram, people gonna still get in the comments. Cause you know, people have this cool thing where like their eyes function, but their comprehension level is a little lower than you prefer. And so they're still not gonna message you on Instagram. Um, but just this week I've noticed in the last few weeks that my TikTok's been popping. I've had over uh, over 600 new followers on Instagram. And so they are finding you. And I love that because I'm more active in my stories on Instagram. So now those seeds that are being planted, they're watching, they're going to be watching me on an everyday basis. So uh, ladies, I know we're right at one hour, anything like either of you want to be able to download, drop any tips, Jocelyn, before we hop off about getting on video for the first time, because you know, the little booty holes be a little puckered up. Anything you'd like to say before we hop off? Yes. So I'm going to put a link to a YouTube video in the chat. Make sure you copy it and you go watch it. It's a cartoon. You're welcome. But um, it's a cute, it's cute. It's the movie Sing and it's this cute elephant named Nina. And she is incredible. She's, she has the most beautiful voice in this video, but she is terrified to sing in front of other people. And so if you watch the video, the advice that he gives her on how to get over the fear of singing in front of other people is exactly the advice I would give you to take your business to that next level. It's getting out of your comfort zone and it's just start. Once you just start, you're still going to be terrified. I'm still getting some tacos right now, but the thing is, is it gets easier and easier and easier every single time as you go. And then what, all of a sudden, one day you'll enjoy it. But if you don't start, it's always going to be difficult. Kind of like if you're going to jump off a cliff into the water, like 
the more you sit there and think about jumping and like look down at how far that distance is, the more terrified you're going to get. The only way to get over that fear is to just jump. Boom. It's just like ripping off a bandaid. And there's like a meme on the internet. That's like, if you spend too much time thinking about it, you're just living through it twice. You know, so don't do that to yourself. So tonight we hope this encouraged you guys. I'm going to get this uploaded on my YouTube. And so feel free and like within 30 minutes, go to my YouTube. You can share it in your team page, whatever it is that you want. But we want to challenge you guys, get your mindset right and build that audience. You guys, now is the time. Brittany, anything you want to say before we hop off? Nope, I think we're good. Just go do it. Just go do it. Boom, Nike, just do it. We love you guys. Have a great night. Go crush the end of 2020 and launch into 2021 strong. Talk to you soon. Bye friends.